had a question come through on how to read these type of survey reports that you might come across. And they are a little tricky at first if you don't know what you're looking at, but they're not as complicated as it seems. So I have this survey open for the May's 136H2524. This is in Logan County, Oklahoma. And these reports look roughly the same every time it's run. This is a I mean, standard survey report. This is what most of them end up looking like. So on the right, I have a map showing the well that we're looking at here today. The surface location of the well is down here in section 36, and it's coming up and around this direction. Basically, what this is doing is it's taking a data point every so many feet going down into the wellbore. That is the survey part of it is saying at this point in the wellbore, we say we are here based on what our tools are showing us down hole. This is their way of showing where they are underground since you can't actually go out and point to where it is on the surface like you can a building or a pipeline. You'll see filings showing people saying, yes, I vouch that this is the correct survey, that this was actually filed, that the tools were calibrated. You know, I'm the one signing off that I calibrated the tools. Those type of things are on file also when they do these type of surveys. This first page is this the baseline things. Really the only important things if you want to look at this is we have the latitude and longitude. You could take these coordinates and put them into Google and Google can read these coordinates if you want to. Northing and easting is just like another version of coordinates. If you're really mapping things in a GIS person, we have what data plane all this is in. You don't need to know that normally for just looking at it. And then we have which company is the operator that drilled it, which county, what is the location of it, and what's the well name. All should be here on the header. Now going down into it, what this is going to do is just taking the measured depth, which is Physically, if you were to put a tape measure down into the well bore, how long that tape measure is reading? Measure depth, like tape measure depth, you can think of it. At zero depth, you have zero everything because this is all relative to that first data point. Zero is kind of the calibration mark where you, you know, tear the scale to, to reset everything. You know what? You can actually see that. It's behind my head. Let me move it to where you can see it. So measure depth. Here's the the tape measure depth. Here's at zero feet, everything's zero. At 202 feet down, the tape measure would read 202 feet. We have the inclination. If you were to drop a rock down the well bore, that is zero inclination. How things fall is zero. And then as you were to move the bobbin left and right, that is the inclination. So how much away from going straight down is it in degrees? So if zero is straight down, 90 degrees would be going perpendicular to straight down. So then azimuth, I pulled up this graphic for azimuth to help explain it. If you were to be looking bird's eye view down onto the ground, if zero degrees was north, the degrees azimuth is which direction it's going. If it's zero degrees, that means they're headed north. And if it's 180 degrees, that means they're headed south. So if we look at this, I know that these are kind of abstract things until you see them. Let me try to not put it behind my head this time. Here, this this should make it more tangible of what we're actually talking about. So now this is the, the surface location of the well that we're talking about. If you were to drive up, here's the road, and you can drive and touch the wellhead right here. That is the zero, zero, zero stuff we were talking about over here. Every little star is a line on this survey. At 202 feet down, there's a star right here. <laughs> it's all They're all stacked on top of each other because we're going straight down into the ground right here. Uh, and if you look, there's not much inclination because we are going straight down. Remember, zero close to zero means you're dropping a rock and it's falling straight down. And then azimuth, this is saying 140 or so is what the first couple are reading at. If we go back to our little chart here, 140 is approximately southeast direction. And you'll see that as you start going down, you start going the southeast direction. Quickly, it kind of turns and starts going east, which would be 90. And again, each one of these lines is one of these stars as they're taking a measurement as they go down into the wellbore. Eventually, you get to a depth where you start seeing this 318 be a common number. And that's where it starts taking off this direction. And then as you see the inclination increase, that is them starting to turn to become horizontal. So they can start to drill that horizontal well. And you'll see it happens over several thousand feet. It's not like an instant, you just turn at a 90 degree angle. 
this dog leg rate is how severe of a turn it is. And that's an industry terminology there. If we go back to vertical depth, vertical depth is if you were to just take a tape measure and force it straight into the ground, <laughs> regardless of what the wellbore is actually, what path the wellbore is taking. If you were to just take the amount of ground between where the well is and where the surface is, that's the actual like depth of ground that the well is down. So if you're drilling straight down, measured depth will be the same as vertical depth because you're drilling straight down. That's covering the, the maximum amount of ground possible. As you start turning, the opposite end of that is if you're drilling straight across, you're not covering, it, covering any new ground. So your vertical depth won't increase because you're staying at the same depth and just drilling across the same layer. So those are the two extremes. So vertical depth tells you what formation you're drilling in, while measure depth tells you how long the wellbore is. So this northing and this is how many feet north, south they are from the wellhead at this point. Vertical section is saying how much vertical section has been drilled. These two things more just tell the operators and people working with the well when they're pushing that pipe down into the well the more of a turn there is the harder it is to get things in there you have to have more clearance on either side as you're starting to bend the tools you have like a a straight line <laughs> something that won't won't bend and you're trying to get it through a hole you need a bigger hole in order to have room to to maneuver it so that's basically all that's telling it so then as you go along each one of these little points will plot out if you were to put all these points into a program like like i did and map them up uh, you get something that looks like where all these stars are following the wellbore path here so each one of these stars is just a line on this well survey here that will get you all the way to the end of the well. And you can see it's not like a straight line. I mean, drilling a perfectly straight line is very difficult to do. And so typically you drill the best thing closest to a straight line while trying to follow the geology. And that's something called geosteering, which is a whole nother topic. The very last measured depth is how long the measured depth of the well, the MD of the well, you could say. Then we have the vertical depth. This is the final depth that they reach, the, usually the target of the reservoir, where however deep the reservoir they're targeting is. Here is the coordinates of the bottom hole location, they call it, like the very end point of the well is here. My dog is going nuts. It's time to pick up her sister from school, she thinks. It's not time yet. Okay, and that's, that's probably enough for this, this uh, topic here. So I will see you in the next video.